Well, good morning and Happy New Year to you. I don't know if you're like most people, but I'm guessing that you have some New Year's resolutions or adjustments you're about to make. But I'm guessing if you are anything like me, when you think about what you want to happen in 2017, it's nothing short of greatness. Like we don't generally plan, you know what, I think I'd like to gain 10 pounds, right? We're like, man, I'm going to get in shape and life is going to be good. I'm going to be looking good. My wife's going to, yeah, all wonderful things, right? We think great things when we think about our resolutions. So for me, I, I did go to the doctor just a couple of weeks ago and I've had this really sweet, kind, gentle, considerate doctor for some time, but she's moved off. And so I got a new guy who he's nice enough um, but he's from India, and he said, uh, Mr. Waymire, I need to say something to you, and I don't want to hurt your feelings. I'm thinking, what does your doctor say is going to hurt your feelings? He says, you are 30 pounds overweight. You need to eat no more than 1,800 calories a day for the next six months. And I thought, well, so we're going to shoot for greatness in 2017. That's where we're going on the weight thing. So um, hopefully we'll get kicked off to a good start tomorrow, you know, that goes. But anyway, I don't know what your resolutions are, but I hope you have some things that you're thinking, you know what, I, I want this to be better in 2017. I want a life to be better. I want my family to be better. Maybe it's in your job or whatever. But today I want to take just a minute and talk to you about spiritual greatness. Now, I'm all for health, greatness. I need it. I need some greatness working, right? You know, I need some of that. And, and I'm all for family greatness. But today, I want to talk to you about spiritual greatness. Like, what does that look like for us? For you in 2017, what are some steps that you could take that you could begin to walk into what we would call spiritual greatness or a time of just profound blessing that you could draw nearer to God and know Him more and see His blessings in your life more and more. Now, the good thing about this, we are back in the book of John. If you remember um, Brian Fields' likes three years long series, right? So we're, we're back in the gospel of John. We're still in this series. been walking through it for quite a long time now. We're going to be in John chapter 13, but I need to give you some context, and it's really helpful for us because the disciples of Jesus, you know, the guys that you hear about who were, you know, kind of average, ordinary people, they were having a discussion about just this thing, greatness. Now, they weren't necessarily having a discussion about how to be great. They were just kind of having the thing that happens in the back seat of my car with my kids. They're talking about who is the greatest, right? So I'm better than you, all this. And so this is what's going on, and the context is the Last Supper. Like, so Jesus is just about to go to the cross. He's about to offer himself as a sacrifice. He's gathered with his disciples. They're in the upper room. They're sharing a meal together. And here are the disciples talking about who's the greatest, you know, like I'm, my dad can beat up your dad. I don't know, ex know exactly how it went, but they were talking about who was the greatest. And so Jesus is just going to very subtly intervene. And now on this thing, I say subtly, but Jesus wanted to be very clear with the disciples. If you read throughout the Gospels, you all often get like a parable. And so you're reading the parable and you're thinking, I've got to find myself or like what the point of the parable is. And then I can kind of apply that to myself. On this particular occasion, Jesus wanted to be abundantly clear about what he was talking about. And he's going to address spiritual greatness. This is the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. This is the Son of God. This is Jesus talking. That's not, not any of his disciples. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to John chapter 13. We're going to begin in verse 1. And we're going to read through this section, and Jesus is going to tell us exactly what greatness looks like. Now, remember, there's a fight going on. You know, they're kind of, hey, I think I need to sit at the right hand of Jesus, or you know what, I'm like nine times more spiritual than you. Do you remember what you did last week? They're, they're having this discussion at the table, and, and Jesus is going to, you know, kind of line some things out. So in John 13 and verse 1, it says, now, before the feast of the Passover, Jesus, knowing that his hour had come, that he would depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, the devil, having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Judas is the one who was ultimately going to betray Jesus, the devil, having put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to betray him, Jesus... And Kind of difficult language here, but bear with me. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands. Now, I want you to think about this. God has given all things into the hands of Jesus. Do you remember some of the miracles that Jesus had performed? He was like, hey, Lazarus. You know, Lazarus is dead. He's like, 
Come on out. Be raised. He raised a man from the dead with his voice. This is Jesus who had walked on water. Jesus who spoke to the storm and calmed it. Jesus who had turned the five loaves and two fish into enough food for 5,000. Jesus had done miraculous things. And the scriptures tell us that the Father had given all things into the hands of Jesus, who was the Son of God, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. And he was just about to hit the climax. He was just about to go to the cross. This is a big moment for Jesus. God has placed everything into his hands. And then he'd come from God and was going back to God. This Jesus, in the midst of a discussion about who was going to be the greatest, verse 4, Jesus got up from supper, and laid aside his garments. He took off his outer cloak. I bet the room got silent. And the disciples are, are, are looking on, wondering what's going on. It says he took a towel and he girded himself. He wrapped the towel around his waist. Then Jesus, he poured water into the basin. And he began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel which, with which he was girded. And he came to Simon Peter and he said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? So Peter's saying, no, Jesus, you can't do this to me. Like, you're the king of kings and you're the Lord of lords and I'm just Peter. Remember, I screw up a lot. Jesus answered and said to him, what I do you do not realize now, but you will understand hereafter. Peter, Jesus, Peter said to him, never Shall you wash my feet? Jesus said, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, then wash not only my feet, but also get my hands, get my head, wash everything in between. If you want to wash me, I want to be clean. Jesus said to him, He who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean, and you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew the one who was betraying him, and for this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. Now look here in verse 12. So when he had, fin when he had washed their feet, and taking his garments and declined at the table. Again, he said to him, Do you know what I have done to you? Guys, do you realize what I, I just did for you there? Do you know I'm trying to teach you something? You who are arguing about spiritual greatness or who's going to be the greatest in my kingdom or any of those things. He said, You call me teacher and Lord. And wouldn't we all agree with that? Jesus Christ is indeed our teacher. He is our example. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. And we all like pump our fists and get excited about that, right? And I'm sure the disciples were like, yes, you're, you're Lord. You're the King of kings. You're our Savior. You're the Messiah. You call me teacher and Lord. And you are right, for so I am. If I then, the Lord and the teacher, washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I gave you an example that you should do as I did to you. As we look into 2017 and we look toward spiritual greatness, what Jesus would point us toward is humble service. That in 2017, we would learn what it looks like to humble ourselves before our families, to humble ourselves before our coworkers, humble, humble ourselves before our small group maybe, and to take up the towel of a servant and begin to wash other people's feet. Now, not physically, I don't think. There are some denominations, and I praise Jesus that we're not one of them, that think that very literally we should have an ordinance where we wash each other's feet, kind of like the Lord's Supper. I don't think that's what Jesus was teaching here. But what I think Jesus wanted us to understand, and, and if you kind of understand the context here, what Jesus did in this moment was he took on the identity of the lowest servant in the household. Like if you were the, the bottom rung of the ladder, you were the, you know, the, the lowest of servant, he was the one who would take up the towel in the basin and would wash the feet. So they took showers like we did, or they would bathe fairly regularly, but if you walk everywhere that you go, you're wearing sandals, your feet would become, well, they would get dirty, they would be kind of grimy and nasty, and so before a feast in particular, or a big supper or things, oftentimes a servant would come in and wash the feet, but on this day, there was no servant. And as they all debated about who was the greatest, the king of kings and the lord of lords took off his cloak. He pushed away from the comfort of the table 
from the place where he probably should have been served. And he took up a towel and a basin, and he began to scrub the feet of his disciples. For those of us who are Christians, who call him teacher and Lord, perhaps in 2017, we need to learn the same lesson that he wanted to teach the disciples on this day. We need to learn to begin to wash each other's feet. In verse 16, he says, Truly, truly, I say to you, a slave is not greater than his master, nor is the one who sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. So what does it look like for us to be a servant? Have you ever known someone who served in the soup kitchen and it was the opposite of humble service for them? It was like their moment to shine. They're going to brag about it all year long. They were kind of doing it for themselves and their appearance, right? So, hey, I went and did this thing and it was just so great. I got to, and really, you're like, really? That was, that was service for you? And it seems to be something that they were using to build themselves up rather than something they would use to humble themselves. If you don't know anyone like that, I promise you that I've done it many times in my life. Like, I've been guilty of that very thing. Like, I go in to serve, but really it's all about me and what I can get. What Jesus does here, I believe there is a model here for what humble service looks like. There's a model here for what greatness in the kingdom of God looks like. A model here for what spiritual greatness looks like. Look back with me in verse, verse 4. As Jesus was sitting at the table, he's enjoying fellowship with his friends. He's, you know, it's a last supper with his disciples. It was an important moment. But Jesus got up from supper and he laid aside his garments. Now, Jesus was just like you and me. Like he took on flesh of man, right? Like human flesh. And Jesus had the weakness and the frailty of flesh just like any of us and as Jesus takes his outer cloak he wasn't stripping naked there but he was taking his outer cloak he was exposing himself he was becoming vulnerable he was humbling himself before his disciples when he took up a towel when he put on the wardrobe of the lowest servant of the household what Jesus was doing was humbling himself do you know where spiritual greatness begins do you know where this, the, the thing that we might be seeking in 2017, which would be God's biggest blessing, and we want all that God has for us in fullness, do you know where it begins for each of us? It begins in a place of humility. On this day, Jesus purposefully humiliated himself in front of his disciples, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Do you remember what Paul said about Jesus? It's called the Christ hymn and Philippians chapter 2, you know, Jesus was ruling and reigning in heaven. He had spoken all that we know and see into existence. He was reigning with authority and power. Paul says this to the Philippian church. He says, you should have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. You want to know what humility looks like? Have this attitude in yourself, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. He didn't cling to equality with God. But instead, Jesus emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant. Being made in the likeness of men, he took on human flesh. Being found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. If the King of kings and the Lord of lords can set aside all of his, the worth that is due him, all of his power, all of his authority, and he can take on the weakness of human flesh, if he can set aside the comfort and the glory of heaven, take off his outer cloak and put on the wardrobe of the lowest servant, is that something that we too should do? Didn't Jesus say, if I then the Lord and teacher washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet? Spiritual greatness begins with humility. That's what Jesus Christ did for us. I stand here before you today as someone who uh, 
I'm often given to, to pride to thinking more of myself than I ought to. I often think that, you know what, my wife should take care of me. Or, you know, I, I, I deserve this thing in life. People owe me this. I'm an American. I have rights, right? I mean, I begin to become prideful about whatever it is that, that's going on in, in my life. And as I sat down and I began to study this text, I was, I was humbled. I was convicted that I... That Jesus, who is truly worthy of worship and honor and glory and service and all these things, he humbled himself to the lowest servant. So in 2017, if you want spiritual greatness, it might begin with humbling yourself. It might begin with something like Jesus did and taking off the cloak of your comfort, the cloak of your position. It might be taking off the cloak that hides some of your imperfections, We're beginning to reveal your frailty and your weakness to other people in your life. Opening yourself up and saying, God, I don't care what it is. I don't care where you want me to go or what it is that you want me to do. God, I'm going to do it. It's humility. The second thing that Jesus did... <clears throat> After humbling himself in front of his disciples, he stripped off his cloak. As he did, he took up the towel. He took up the basin. He went around to these guys and did the grossest job, didn't he? I mean, would anyone want this job? Jesus went around to the disciples whose feet had picked up the grit and the grime of the city. And he began with his hands. He got his hands dirty as he scrubbed their feet clean. The King of kings and the Lord of lords knelt down on his knees and he washed their feet clean. So it begins with humility, which leads us into service. But I mean, goodness, who wants to do this sort of thing, right? Is there anything good that can come out of this? Is there any type of, like, why would we want to do these types of things? As I, I mentioned before, as we look forward to spiritual greatness in 2017, if we would pursue that type of thing, what, what's the result of this? If we are willing to humble ourselves and, you know, put on the clothes of a servant, if we're willing to serve our neighbor, whatever that might look like, is there, is there a reward for this? In verse 17, he says, If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Isn't the kingdom of God kind of difficult for us to understand sometimes? Like when, when I think of blessing, I don't think about stripping off all the, the comforts and the, the riches of my life and saying instead that I wanted to become a bond servant. Isn't the kingdom of God a little bit difficult when it says if you want to be exalted, you need to become the servant of all? But what Jesus tells us here is that if you will humble yourself before him in 2017, and rather than seeking to be served, rather than seeking different ways to enrich yourself, rather than seeking your own glory and your own stuff, if you would say, I'm going to humble myself and become a servant to those around me. And you know what Jesus said? Jesus who has all things in his hands, you are blessed if you do this. You will be blessed when you serve other people. You will be blessed. But practically, what does this look like for us? What, I mean, we don't practice foot washing. I mean, it might happen for some of you. I mean, we wash our feet, but we don't practice that in the church. It's, you know, we wear shoes. We don't walk around in sandals and get grimy and nasty for the most part. What does it look like for us to serve one another in the church? Like, how, I mean, what would this be? I would say it would start with this. It would be husbands. We know that for the most part, most of us are bigger and stronger than our wives, and we could if we wanted to use our strength to dominate our wives and our families, right? But Jesus would say, husband, humble yourself, and rather than seeking to be served by your wife and by your family, become a servant. The scriptures would say that, husbands, you should love your wives just like Jesus loved the church and gave his, himself up for her. That husbands, you would consider your wives. That husbands, you would honor your wives. Husbands, you would understand your wives. You're giving yourself up for her. You are humbling 
serving your wife. And you know what the scriptures say? You will be blessed. And then wives, that thing, that piece of scripture that in our culture, it's like, it's like someone beating on, you know, a, nails down a chalkboard or a gong. The, the scripture would say, wives, submit to your husbands as to Christ. Now, we would all agree that wives are just as intelligent and just as gifted and all these things. Why in the world would we want to do that? It's about humbling yourself, being just as intelligent, just as capable. But instead that you would humble yourself and become a servant. And you know what the results of that is? The scriptures say you will be blessed. Children, students in this room, you know, sometimes your parents are going to ask you to do things that are so stinking frustrating, right? Like they don't understand all of what's going on. You're not going to agree with the decisions that they make sometimes. But you know what the scriptures would tell you to do? You know what it might look like for you to be this humble servant in your home? The scriptures would say, children, obey your parents. But it doesn't just happen in our homes, does it? Because tomorrow some of us are going to go to work and there's going to be difficult bosses and difficult co-workers. And Jesus would say, I want you to humble yourself and I want you to become a servant. There's a passage in, in 2 Peter that I read over and over and over and it just struck me. It, it, it's Peter speaking specifically to slaves. He says, slaves, obey your masters. Work hard, even if they are harsh with you and unreasonable. The example of Jesus Christ teaches us that when we go to work tomorrow, and we have a boss who's a little bit unreasonable, when he's harsh, when he doesn't understand, and he doesn't treat us like we should, you know what the example of Christ tells us to do? To humble ourselves. And become servants, to work hard in those settings. Some of you have just come through maybe a difficult holiday season with family members who rubbed you the wrong way. Uh, you're thankful that the holidays have come and gone. But you know what the scriptures, you know what the example of Jesus Christ teaches us to do in the midst of difficult family times when you just want to go hide in your bedroom, lock the door, and not have to see people? Jesus would say, I want you to humble yourself. I want you to take off the cloak of all of your rights and all of, all of your comfort and all those things. I want you to gird yourself like a servant. And I want you to go in there and I want you to serve that person. If you're seeking greatness in 2017, it begins with humility, which leads us to service, which leads us to profound blessings in Jesus Christ. Throughout the month of January, we're actually postponing our community groups. I don't know if y'all heard, but we're not going to be holding community groups through 2017. I've been talking the last several weeks. God has blessed us in huge ways. And we have, uh, you know, average attendance here is way up. God's doing wonderful things, and we celebrate all of that. But you know what we desperately need in our church? Are some people who would be willing to say, you know what? I'm willing to humble myself. I don't have it in me. I'm not, you know, the most brilliant leader. I'm not, you know, the most biblically educated. But I'm, I'm willing, Jesus, to put a towel around my waist, to take off the cloak of my comfort and ease, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a shepherd to some people in my small group. I'm going to open up my home and let some people meet there, and we're gonna, I'm going to serve them as we try to seek Jesus Christ together. Brian's going to talk in here kind of at the end about right now we're, we're fasting, asking that God would give us 50 more group leaders. One of the really brutal conversations that we have to have sometimes in staff meeting. Uh, I grew up here in, in Poto, and I know most of the people, and we're always delighted when new guests come in. And every single week it seems like, oh, wow, there's another friend of mine or another person that I know. And we're so grateful to see people come. But one thing that we know and we're convinced of, is that if those people don't get connected to a small group, it's only a matter of time before we'll start seeing empty seats on Sunday and they won't be here. For you, as you look into 2017, I don't know if that's you. I don't know if maybe God would be leading in your heart that way, but I hope that your heart is that of Jesus Christ, that you would say, there's no job too low for me. There's nothing that I won't do. There's nothing that I'll refuse to do. There's nothing that's too dirty. Listen, 
And what we desperately need in this church are some people who are willing to get their, their hands dirty in the lives of some difficult people. I have a, this is kind of a confession for you, but there's a, a, a young man, he's, uh, he's around my age, I guess, in my life that I never knew him growing up, but he, I got a phone call one day here at the church, and sometimes when the phone rings, I just want to hang up, or I just want to not answer, because you never know what's about to come, and uh, this, this young man, his name is, is Griffin, and Griffin has been in prison for about the past year now, and throughout his time where he was, you know, he'd, he'd gotten charged, and he's, he's, when I was a drug offense, I would go and visit him in his motel, and then he needed something, you know, I need some money, I got to get some hygiene stuff, and hey, I need a ride to work, and then he needed some dental work done, and then he actually went to jail, and he's saying, hey, I need some money so I can, you know, get this or get that, and then I'm having to write him letters, and you know what my tendency is to want to do? Is to say, you know what, I've done enough for him. Yeah, you know, hey, I've done but you know what I believe Jesus Christ desires for each of us to do? With those difficult people in our life who seem to have needs that never end, I believe Jesus wants us to move toward them. And what I've had to do, I've actually developed quite a, a good relationship with him. And uh, I look forward to getting letters from him in the mail. I look forward to the, the day when he's released from prison and I can enjoy you know, a face-to-face -face conversation with him again. I can't pretend like I was humble and a great servant at the beginning of this, but somehow God got me into the midst of this relationship uh, with this, this man, and it's, it's become a, a profound blessing to me. It starts with humility, which leads us to service, which ends up in the blessings of God in our lives. Would you hear these words of Jesus spoken 2,000 years ago to his disciples, but also now spoken to you? If I then, the Lord and teacher, washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I gave you an example that you also should do as I did to you. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Anybody looking for greatness in 2017? I certainly am. I want everything that God has for me. I, I want the fullness of what God has for me. It starts with humility, which leads us to service, which ends up with God's blessings. Would you bow your heads with me? Father, I thank you that, um, God, there wasn't a job so low that you wouldn't do it. I'm thankful that you humbled yourself, stripping yourself of your glory and coming in flesh as a as a human, taking on the weakness and the frailty of this fleshly body, Father. God, enduring sinful men and going to the cross that we might find life. I would thank you for your example of washing feet. And Lord, I pray that Cross Community Church would be known as a church of servants, humble servants for whom... There's no job too low. There's no person that's too far gone. There's no person for whom we won't pursue and chase after. And we won't take the gospel to. We won't pray for. We won't invest in. Because, Lord, we were hopeless. We were the lost cause. We had no hope. And you didn't give up on us. So, Lord, may your word penetrate our hearts today may we be humbled by your sacrifice and God may you use us in this community to serve other people to bless them to honor them Lord to show other people your glory I pray it in the name of Jesus I ask that you would stand and in this moment as we worship and as we sing would you say God where do you want me to go? Where do you want me to serve? There's no place I won't go. There's no job I won't do. God, would you just use me whenever, however, and wherever you want to use me?